Okay, um, in this uh, lesson, we're going to, or actually assignment, uh, might as well start by making a new project. Uh, we'll just kind of name that in that standard format we've been using, last name, first name, and then we'll call this assignment three. Uh, we could say to save to our hard drive, uh, see users, your username, uh, under those projects as well. Um, anyways, um, in the last lesson we spent a lot of time with uh, variables, working with different common variables and arrays and those kind of things. So um, <clears throat> this time around we're going to finally get into um, programming some decision making into um, our application and, and um, obviously the reason why we're going to do that is um, computer programming would be uh, and computer applications wouldn't be very effective if they couldn't make decisions for us based on the data that you receive from users. So um, we're going to add um, some new design elements that we haven't necessarily used before. Um, just to kind of explore those as well. Uh, let's add a checkbox. Let's add a checkbox here. Um, I don't know what we're going to call it. Let's go... It doesn't really matter. Let's just call it checkbox one. Exciting. And then down here, I'm just going to change the text right now to not selected. Um, with other UI elements, sometimes if you want something to change, um, properties wise, I would have maybe had to add a label, but this has its own text, and so. It's kind of got two things that I'm going to work with. I'm going to work with <coughs> checked and unchecked, and then also the text there. Um, so for right now, I'm going to put not selected. Um, you could use this to make lots of different decisions, but for right now, we're just going to have it called uh, not selected, the text in there. Uh, and so we'll add that. Now, with this, um, we're going to take a look at probably its default um, event handler which is check changed. Okay, and you can see that there, like I said, I can either click down here, double click, or I can double click on the item, and that's actually gonna create um, that event handler that we want. Okay, and so you can see pretty standard. You don't have to worry about this stuff up here, or this class stuff, or this, this kind of initialization component here. We don't need to worry about that right now. All we're gonna concern ourselves is what's happening within that uh, event handler that we've created there for check box one. So what we want to have actually happen here is when we select that check checkbox, okay, so when that's changed, okay, we want the text here to change to selected. So just a simple thing. Now we're going to take a look at the if statement, and so the if statement is a way that we can kind of test a condition or, or check to see if something is uh, true or not. And so that's basically what the if statement does. So uh, we're going to go if, and if you remember the boolean value uh, was a true or false kind of statement. So if, um, we're going to say checkbox1 dot checked, and you can see that that's one of the options here. Now if I hover over that, notice that it says here it's a bool, okay? It says gets or sets a value indicating whether the system window from checkbox is checked or is in the check state. So that's what we want to test for. We want to see if this is checked or not. Okay, and so I can click on check there, or I can just hit tab and it's going to fill that for me. Okay, now there's a couple of things that I could do here. I can actually just leave it as is. And if I leave that within this if here, it's going to test if this condition is true, if checked is true. Um, but I could also just fill that in. This is kind of more of a longhand way to do it. I could do use the double equal sign and then true. Okay, and we'll use this for when we work with strings rather than bools and, and, and integers and those kind of things. We can do use this double equal sign test to see if some if this side equals this side equals true. Now, like I said, shorthand we could get away with just this. Okay, there. So if and then you have brackets and then the condition inside of those brackets. So if checked, okay, and then we want to have curly brackets here, 
Okay, and so everything's kind of inside each other, right? So this is the if statement. This is the event handler. So we're kind of getting a feel for how we're organizing things. So if checks checkbox one is checked, okay, what we want to have happen is checkbox one text, the text property, we're gonna change that and then just with the equal sign. We want that now to equal. And remember we have to have quotation marks around text. Select it. Okay, and then semicolon to kind of finish off that statement. So if checkbox one checked is true, okay, checkbox one text will equal selected. So it's going to change that text for us. Now, with if statements, we could, there's an optional else statement that we can add in. We're going to add that in right now. So we're going to actually go else, okay. And so if it's not checked, we want to say what's going to happen then. So if it's not checked, I want checkbox one text to equal not selected. So now when I take a look at that condition, it's going to be, okay, well, if it's this, if it's checked, it's going to do this. If it's not checked, it's going to do this. Okay, so fairly straightforward. Let's just run our application and see how that looks and see how it works. So if I hit the start button, uh, so now when I click here, selected, not selected. Selected, not selected. Okay, and that's how a checkbox works. Fairly standard, fairly straightforward there. Okay, and a new UI element for us to kind of work with, and you can see how that could be handy for lots of different scenarios. Okay, and so I'm just going to close that for now. Now we're going to go back to our design interface. The next thing that we're going to work with is we're going to work with the if else statement. And so when we work with that, okay, we are going to use a new, another new element. Which we're going to call, uh, we're going to use a combo box actually. This is kind of like a drop down box that we can actually add our own thing to. So I'm going to add that in here. Now, with a combo box, when you want to edit the items in it, and you can see it's going to give options to bind data stuff to, and so you could see where binding to some other array or something would be valuable there. Um, but we're just going to edit these manually. We're not going to get super complicated here. And so what I'm going to do in this box here, I'm going to just list some animals. Um, so I'm going to say dog. We're going to say a walleye. We're going to say a frog. We're going to say, uh, let's just do a J. I want a bird in there. And let's do a reptile too, snake. Okay, so I have just five different types of animals there and says one per line. It's pretty easy to edit that. And then click OK. And then so I've modified those things. Now, we want to have an event handler when this kind of combo box changes, okay? When its index changes or when it's, it changes its value there. And so uh, selected value change might be what I want. I think the default is index. Um, but let's see when the value change. That actually might be an event handler that's more. So you notice that we can go back between the properties and the events. I was thinking index change, but let's just actually go to value change because okay, with the combo box you can manually enter some stuff as well. So um, let's go here, value change. So I'm going to double click on selected value changed. Let's go with that. Let's go with that event handler. If it doesn't work, we'll go back and change it to index change. But uh, combo box one selected value change. So we're good there. Now, what I want to see happen though, um, is we have our event handler, but you know what? We need something that's going to be able to show some kind of result. So let's put a label on the design too. I forgot to add that label. So let's just go here, label, and let's put a label in here. And we're going to call our label uh, in the properties here. We'll call our label label LBL animal. Okay, label animal type, and then I'll maybe go down here and, and change that text to animal type, and then we're set up. Okay, so we're going to have three basic UI elements for this uh, lesson. So there we go, and so now we want something to happen here when that combo box changes. So I'm going to go back to my code behind. I already have created that event handler there. Okay, and so in here, now when um, what I want to do is I want to do another if statement, if, and open bracket, I'm going to say if 
Um, let's say combo box one dot. Uh, I think it's going to be text. Text, yep. Let's go with text. So if you remember, text would be a string. Okay, equals. Uh, we're going to say, you know, we put dog in there as one of our animals. Okay, and then we want to have, again, our conditions. So we're going to go if. So if combo box one text equals, we're going to use that double equal sign dog. We want uh, label animal type dot text to equal. Oh, a dog is a mammal. So we're going to go there. Okay. Now we're going to expand on this. We're going to use if else, like I was saying. So now we're going to go if else. And you can see this will be highlighted in blue as well. And so we need another condition. So we're going to say combo box one dot text equals. Uh, I got a frog in there somewhere. Frog. And if it's a frog, we're going to say, well, we need label animal type dot text to equal amphibian. And semicolon to close that off. Okay. Uh, I don't think I'm missing anything. If else, I think we're good there. Oh, I missed a semi. No, I don't need a semi. Okay, and then if else, we want us to do that same kind of thing, and I can start to copy and paste some of this. Actually, let's just let's just simplify our life and do that. Copy, enter. Let's go. If else, we're gonna change this. If it's a See, that's all we know. So then we're just going to go else here. And we'll go label the text equal unknown. Uh, okay, and we should be good there. Now, what is why am I? Okay, so I figured out the problem there. I just didn't want to waste time on the video doing that. Um, I had if and else backwards. I had if else, it should have been LCF, 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 LCF. So that was the only issue there. So now my code looked good. So it's going to do. If it's a dog, it's going to see mammal. If it's a frog, amphibian, walleye, fish. And you're going to see that here when I run. Uh, I'm running out of time on this video, so I want to kind of get that wrapped up. So let's just take a look at this when we run this. Okay, very straightforward. When I select dog, it goes to mammal. When I select frog, it goes to amphibian, jay, bird, snake. Okay, and if I enter some other kind of weird things like a lion, it's not going to do anything different. It's not going to change. Okay, so if I had some other category in there, it would. So you can see that it changes based on what I kind of put up there. Okay, so fairly straightforward. Um, 